Our guest is Bridget McNulty, and she is joining us from South Africa. Bridget is the author of the internationally published book, The Grief Handbook, A Guide Through the Worst Days of Your Life. She's also co-founder of Sweet Life, South Africa's largest online diabetes community. Welcome, Bridget. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to have you. So let's start with the, the first question, of course, being why did you write The Grief Handbook? So in 2019, my mom died very suddenly. Um, she was a perfectly happy, healthy 72-year-old and then suddenly started complaining of strange symptoms like acid reflux and sore feet and then got a diagnosis of four different kinds of cancer and two weeks later, she died. And I'm a reader and a writer and so I looked for a book that would help me because books have always helped me and I couldn't find one. I could find kind of dense philosophical texts and I could find very religious books and that wasn't what I was looking for. I was just looking for a kind, empathetic guide through what felt like the worst days of my life. And I wanted something that I could kind of get stuck into myself. I didn't want someone to just be telling me what to do. I wanted something that would guide me through these days and give me space to express myself. And so that's it. The Grief Handbook was born. And it was really the book that I wished I'd had when my mom died. Well, that, that's, you've done a public service by creating that. And it, it surprises me that that book wasn't available already that, you know, because so many people deal with grief and somebody else, you know, certainly has found themselves in a very similar situation. But, mm -hmm. you know, as you and I know that writing uh, takes a certain amount of determination and willingness to do it. So I applaud you for your efforts. Thank you. Yeah. I was also surprised. So how about the, the next logical question is, for this process for you, how did the creative um, expression of writing help you during your time of grief? It was actually so cathartic because I wrote it just about a year after my mom died, actually at the beginning of the COVID-19 lockdown in South Africa. And it was so helpful for me to try and put those feelings, those huge feelings into words, because when someone dies, it is obliterating and it's emotionally and physically and mentally to try and put that hugeness into words was so helpful for me to, to start moving through the process. And it also made me realize that I had actually started moving through the process. And then as I edited it, as you know, you write a book and, and that's, almost the easy part, the first draft, because then you have to keep editing it. And I found out more and more about the grief process as I was editing it. And, and there's a lot of expert opinions and expert opinions about things like trauma and post-traumatic stress disorder. And so it, it was so helpful because it felt like my therapy while I was writing the book. Yeah, I'm sure that there's a lot of research that you looked at, a lot of psychological aspects to the, the grieving process. And I imagine, you know, not only was it um, this catharsis, but also a tremendous learning experience, which then, of course, has put you in a position to be able to talk, um, you know, in a very fluid and natural way about a very important subject for everyone who experiences grief. It's really, it's the one thing we can all be guaranteed of in life. We are all definitely going to lose someone we love, and yet we don't really have the language for it. Yeah, we're not really prepared for it. I guess maybe another way of saying that is we're not really taught uh, yeah. how to, to grieve or how to prepare for it. And of course, there's a lot of uh, cultural aspects and, and yeah. you know, uh, not taboo, but just how society approaches it and it being something that we don't talk about until it's upon <laughs> us. Um, how about for people who aren't writers, because not everybody's a writer. A lot of people have good yeah. ideas about writing, but it takes some you know, some real focus and a lot of energy for people who just writing doesn't come to them. What else can they do? What can help them go through this grieving process? So one of the things I found so interesting is that a lot of grief feels like it's trapped inside of you. So it's it's trapped in your mind. You have these, these circular thoughts that, sh that keep going round and round, or the emotions feel very trapped in your body. Like it can, it can feel overwhelmingly overwhelmingly like you're the only one who feels like this and there's no way to get it out so I think writing even for those who aren't writers kind of just vomiting out the thoughts on the page can be really helpful we have I have in the book some scribble pages and some space to vent and to 
to kind of just write the, the things that you need to get out. There's also coloring in pages, but it's any kind of creative expression can help, right? It's just anything that can get it out of your body. So for some people that's baking or cooking, for some people it's gardening. It can also be physical things like running can really help because it, it kind of gets your blood pumping and gets things moving, dancing, any kind of, of creative or physical expression helps to get the kind of that deep heartache out from your body and into the world, which I think is, is so helpful. Well, and, and back on the writing part, it doesn't necessarily have to be that somebody's going to write a formal book and, and do what you've done. You know, a lot of people like to journal. So somebody yeah. could simply, like you say, get it out and, yeah. um, you know, be able to process it that way. Um, you know, because one- And no one has to look at it. Yeah. And so one of the challenges, of course, is that people need to be careful about, and I'm sure you saw this in your research, is people have got to be careful not to relive the quote unquote, the drama of, of and yeah. so that they keep, and then that plays into course of the PTSD and all of that. So for, from your perspective, the process of writing really helped you quote unquote, process the grief. Yeah. Yeah, to be able to move through it. And also because sometimes things don't feel real when they're stuck in your head. And it's only when you get them out on the page that you can be able to look at them and, and put them into some kind of logical order. And I think that's that's one of the great powers of journaling too, is that it forces you to move from where you are to somewhere else. It's very difficult just to write the same thought over and over and over again, but it's very easy to think the same thought over and over and over again. That's... Very well said. Bridget McNulty, thank you very much for joining us, The Grief Handbook. All the way from South Africa, you are our first international guest. Glad to be with you. Thank you so much for having me. If you would like more information about the topics and our guests featured in this series, please visit our website at planstrongertv.com. Also, if you have a question you would like David to answer, please send it to questions at planstrongertv.com. Thank you.